All right, guys, welcome to the year end wrap up uh, video slash podcast, whatever you want to call this. But a couple things I wanted to do with this video or with this pod is one, I want to share a bunch of clips that kind of went somewhat viral or just kind of maybe some of the clips I liked and some of the clips that kind of took off this year. And I share those with you. I talk about a couple of them, but really just kind of let them run. If we rewind right back to the very beginning of the year, I was still doing every episode out of my home. This was before green screen. I was literally just setting up the computer and ripping these podcasts off. One of the very first clips we had go viral was this one with Scott Margolin. Uh, check it out. Don't wear fuel. That ain't rocket science. Stop wearing fuel. I know our stuff is That's long. a great statement. That's a great statement. I've, I've made a living taking complex technical subjects and distilling them down to don't wear fuel. All right, one of my favorite episodes was with Daniel Spencer. Uh, we had a few clips kind of go semi-viral and you can see in this one, my studio was progressing slightly. Now I had a green screen, a little bit better background as we made our way to the full studio setup. But check out this clip with Daniel. Bucket or climbing spikes? Climbing spikes, man. I'm horrible in a bucket operation fan. Coffee or energy drinks? Coffee. Hip hop or country? Hip hop. Car guy or truck guy? Mm. I'm a truck guy now. Okay, I'm absolutely obsessed with the history of our trade as linemen. So one thing I did this year was make these short little series from the book, based out of the book, The American Lineman. Check these out and I'm going to continue them next year. POV, you're a lineman in 1901. By the turn of the century, the telegraph and telephone industry had already standardized its pole line design and construction to some degree. Now emerging onto the scene is the electric industry, who adopted most of their construction standards from the more mature telegraph and telephone companies' design techniques. The combination of telegraph, telephone, and electric power systems in these large cities created a very hazardous congestion. Just take a look at some of these images of what the poles looked like from these cities. It's crazy really when you think about having to climb up these poles and work on this stuff. It's no wonder why Lyman always had an audience of bystanders watching them. This era brought the hazard of electrocution into the Lyman's work environment and obviously increased the risk of dying from electrical shock. It's been estimated that one out of every three Lyman was killed in these early years. One of the types of content I tried to make uh, a bit of this year was where I was just answering questions that I found online, just trying to give some give some value from my experience in my career, in my life, and try to like answer some of these questions. So here's a few that went kind of like semi-viral or that people found valuable, check them out. How do you get a job without getting into debt for alignment? Question I get asked all the time. A couple ways to get into the trade without getting into debt. Actually, just really one way is to go to your local union hall, IBEW union hall, sign up there. You're gonna need a couple things right off the bat. They're gonna to wanna to know that you have a commercial driver's license, a CDL, uh, maybe a couple other things depending on the local area. You sign up with them and wait your turn, wait for an apprenticeship spot or a spot as a groundman or something like that. I always say get in whatever way you can get in. If that means you gotta to go to line school to get in, go to line school to get in. There's so much negativity on the internet around going to line school that I think is just a bunch of BS. If that's the way that you get in, it's cheap education. Imagine going and paying for a university degree, you're gonna come out hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt versus paying your 15 to 25,000 to go to line school, you come out, there's a good chance you can get a job from that. That's the way I would go. Anyway, hope that helps. I think the key with these things and with these pieces of content is just trying new things, like just trying to see what sticks and what might work, what gets picked up by the algorithm and pushed out because the heart of it is for us to try to create content, again, that provides value. So one of these clips is something kind of silly to most of the line guys out there it might look really ridiculous and really silly, but it, it worked. <laughs> this is the number one thing that every lineman is gonna tell their apprentice to have with them at all times. It's a roll of electrical tape. I think this is probably the same for every industry. I know videographers have gaff tape, uh, doctors have surgical tape, and linemen have black magic. 
It comes in a couple of different sizes and colors, but if you wanna be your lineman's favorite apprentice, I highly recommend that you have a roll of single wide black electrical tape in your pocket at all times. So if you watch my content a lot, then you'll know that I really love supporting veterans. Not just myself, Kiwana Services obviously supports the vets. Uh, one of the opportunities I got to go and see and participate in this year or participate as a viewer was the best ranger competition in Fort Benning. I believe that was in April. Such an amazing experience. These, these guys are like supremo athletes as well as servicemen and women. Super cool, check this out. So I feel like this competition was a once in a lifetime opportunity for me. Uh, first off, to be able to go to Fort Benning, Georgia and just be on that base as a Canadian even, be on that base and see this stuff was amazing. And then to be able to shoot it and document it was, was so, so unreal. The whole time I was there, eyes wide open, just like couldn't believe I got to witness guys roping, fast roping out of helicopters, uh, doing all that obstacle course stuff was like really stuff you see in the movies or you know, see on YouTube or something, but to be actually, actually there witnessing it was next level. The absolute highlight of the year was finally finishing the brand new studio at Quanta Services headquarters in Houston, Texas. This thing is state of the art. The gear that we have in there is a serious investment and you can see it in the content we're producing. I absolutely love it. I'm so grateful for the studio and everyone involved with helping to make that come to fruition. And yeah, just thanks so much again for everyone's support. Studio's done, let's go check it out, come on in. been so long. It's come a long ways from green screen in my townhouse to this. That's been amazing. In the, in the beginning, I started this podcast. It was just like a nook in my townhouse. It was my computer, a microphone I bought, and that's all I had. And from there, it really hasn't scaled a lot in the last few years, thanks to COVID and the pandemic and all that. I did most of my most of my sessions remotely, which just a green screen in the back and you know, just in my living room still. So it's really cool to see a studio like this and have a really pro professional uh, place to record from. Super cool. One theme on topic I talked about a lot this year was the topic of doing hard things. One particular thing that I did myself that was extremely hard this year was I went to Mount Everest Space Camp and I dealt with things like very little sleep, um, very little amounts of food, high altitude, you know, you're climbing and hiking and trekking for multiple hours a day. It was really hard to do. So I just wanna encourage and challenge you guys if, you're, if you've got something on your bucket list or maybe not even on your bucket list, but maybe you just need to do something that's difficult. I challenge you to do that thing that's difficult. What it does is builds resilience and just makes you better. So go give it a try. Okay, see all the little ants down there? <laughs> that's where we came from. But look at this payoff. Sick. Look at this. Insane. The remainder of these clips, you'll notice the production level has gone way up. That's because they're all from the new studio. You'll see, like, like I said, the investment in the gear and the studio and the lighting and the production value has definitely increased and we have noticed, uh, and you guys can see for yourselves, if you go to social media channels and you go to Powerline Podcast on Instagram or TikTok, you'll see the view counts going up, the engagement going up, the following going up, which is amazing. That's why we invested in this stuff and it's so cool to see. So check all these clips out from the new studio. I talked quite a bit on the podcast about uh, apprentice-master relationship. Uh, what's your take on apprentice-master relationship in today's world? When I think about it, the difference between a journeyman and the last step apprentice is the ability to train. 
I mean, I think at some point no one says that's your, that's your job as a journeyman is to train. How do you fly? How do you go to the bathroom? How do you brush your teeth? How do you eat? And so to me, all that stuff was so intriguing and, and you just get better and better at it, right? And, and uh, it's just fun. It's fun watching other people, especially rookies coming up and um, just doing the little things is, is what you don't get trained on because there's no environment to do that here on earth. There's opportunities however you want to go, whatever you choose. Transmission, you can be, become a bear hand, you can work out of a helicopter. I mean, if you're into that stuff, that's, yep. that's those avenues that you can take, which is great about this career. It's a dial you can turn on your opportunities in different areas you can go, but as well as like, if you need, want to bump up your finances, you want to save a little bit more, you can hit the road, hit the big projects and make the big money. But then if you want to like, get home with the family a little bit more, start a family and you want, you know, flip to some district work, you can, it really is a dial that you can turn. What does a good leader look like to you? When, when you look at a, a company of the size of Kwanat, 57,000 employees, you have to, you have to have some emotional intelligence, right? Because y you may need to chew somebody's ass and be really hard on them, um, while the next guy or, or person, you may just need to pull them aside, put your arm around them, and it's all positive reinforcement, right? And so to be a really effective leader, you have to have a pile of emotional intelligence um, and be able to read people really well. But I also think leading by example, right? I mean, I would never ask anybody at Quanta Services to do something that I wasn't willing to do myself. Well, that's it. I had an absolutely fantastic 2023. I hope you guys did. I hope you guys were able to accomplish all the things you wanted to do and really looking forward to 2024. I know we're gonna keep bringing amazing content for you guys. Hope you have a fantastic final rest of the week, I guess, till the end of the season or till the new year and a happy 2024. Be blessed guys, peace.